All right, gang. A uh, lot going on in this video. This video is uh, a follow-up on the introduction to MANOVA, which is a multiple analysis of variance. And uh, most of the examples that we've looked at uh, previously have dealt with one dependent variable. Uh, what we want to do, uh, well, I don't know about we, but what I want to do in this example is to take a look at where we have multiple dependent variables. Now, <clears throat> Uh, guys, the computations, the interpretations, the write-up is a little bit more comp complicated. In fact, the computations are a lot more complicated and complex. Uh, but I think the logic and the nature uh, underlying the computations aren't a lot different uh, than what we did in just a straightforward ANOVA. And we should be really, really good uh, at those right now. So uh, let me explain the data set that I have up here. Uh, I think what's going on here is, and this is not real, I... I, I created this and uh, did some twists and turns so I could get some of the outputs that I wanted. So, uh, But anyway, we've got a school district uh, and they've given a mass score and they've got a total mass score here. Uh, think of this being out of 40 questions. So this first kid who went to school A uh, got 25 out of 40 uh, total mass score. So uh, uh, Let's see. Yeah, okay. So we can see that the mass score is a combination of a trig and algebra part. And it looks like on the trig and algebra part, there were 20 questions possible. And what we have here is the number of correct responses. And the algebra, same thing, 20 potential or 20 questions. Uh, looks like some kid from uh, school, uh, school district C uh, did really, really, really well. Uh, the total math looks like it would be the total number of responses out of the total 40 questions. So we have a 40 question test here that can be broken into two components, the trig component and the algebra component. And these over here, you can see that I've just put this into a percentage of trig and algebra. So this kid right here, now that I'm highlighting, got a 100% in, uh, in algebra because they got 20 out of 20. They got 80% in trig because they got 16 out of 20. So just to give you an indication of what, uh, what we got going on here. Now, uh, the first thing that we could do here is we could conduct an ANOVA. Uh, just a straightforward ANOVA to see if there's a difference in total math responses across school. But let's say someone hypothesizes that we'd like to get more information across the two components of trig and algebra across the school districts. So MANOVA, in a sense, works kind of like an interaction. Kind of, maybe, sort of, not really, but it kind of does. It's a way to think about it. We can break the dependent variables down and evaluate the mean responses over the school district in this case. So there's going to be a lot going on in this video. Um, so just kind of hang on for the ride, <laughs> okay? So uh, uh, our hypothesis in this case, if we're going to conduct a standard ANOVA, we would say that the mean responses for the total mass score uh, are equal across schools A, B, and C. And of course, our alternative hypothesis would be that at least one pair uh, of means is different. The hypothesis for the MANOVA uh, is pretty much saying the same thing. We would, uh, we would say that, uh, uh, that the, um, how would we put that? Um, I would say that the, there's no difference in mean responses for trig and algebra across school district. And then, of course, the alternative is there is a difference in at least one of these across school district. Now, uh, the motivation here, again, uh, or, or you know, why you would use ANOVA, why would you, you would use MANOVA would just really be the researcher's motivation. And you can, t you, you can surely see a motivation for just wanting to see if there's a difference in total mass score across school district. And I think there's clearly a motivation for a researcher wanting to break it down into two components because, you know, what might happen is uh, uh, maybe uh, school district B, the students are uh, performing well in trig, and maybe we find that uh, the school district A that, uh, uh, you know, compared to the other school districts, that uh, they're not performing as well in algebra. So again, that's why I tell you kind of the interpretation here is kind of like a, 
an interaction, but uh, it's not uh, interaction as we, we typically think of it. So guys, we're going to run an ANOVA, which uses the F value, but uh, we're also going to uh, run the multivariate uh, uh, F value. And uh, we call that, we're either, oh, I'm going to report both, but we do P lice trace and, uh, and Wilkes lambda. I don't really know the difference. So I know the difference, Wilkes lambda, lambda uh, the degrees of freedom are a little bit lower on the error term, but um, um, it seems like PLI's trace is really popular in the social sciences and Wilkes Lambda seems to be reported most in, in education. So I'm sure you can probably go out there and find a contradiction to that, uh, but uh, anyway. So guys, what happens is the uh, F value, we know how those things are calculated. And uh, what the, uh, the multivariate F value does is it looks at a comparison of the the error variant the error variance and the covariance matrix and they look at this at the and the effect of the variance and covariance matrix now remember covariance is just a, a big old fancy word for for measuring how two variables are related uh, you can think of a subset of that being variance where we look at uh, you know how variables kind of related to itself uh, so the covariance uh, is included because you would think that the two variables are probably related. Uh, if they're too highly related, we get into a uh, to an issue. Uh, if they're not related at all, we could just run two separate ANOVAs. So one of the first things we'll do in setting up a, a MANOVA is to look at these and we'll look at the correlation between uh, trig and algebra to see if they are, in, are indeed re, uh, related. Uh, we don't want to see any correlation uh, much higher than 0.9, but uh, if we see a very, very low correlation, then we would just run separate ANOVAs and, and go for it. Uh, now, if um, you know if the two are correlated, we we want to take the uh, take that into account when uh, creating the um, the the MANOVA uh, F statistic. So uh, I, I guess at the end of the day, what happens here is if you're going to take kind of the same measure twice, if this measurement over here and this measurement over here are saying the same thing, uh, then you're really not going to learn anything new. But if you take the correlated measure, then we can get some new information. Uh, it, it, it's kind of like there's, let's say there's a lot of information we're getting in trig, that some of that is accounted for in the algebra. Well, we, using the MANOVA thing, we can kind of separate that out uh, and uh, uh, you know, kind of control for the redundant information uh, from algebra that is expressed uh, in trig. So uh, uh, I say uh, let's, let's make it happen, okay? <laughs> so, uh, so hopefully you know what's going on here. We've got a trig score out of 20, algebra score out of 20, total mass score out of uh, out of 40 and we've got the percent trig and percent algebra so guys uh, let's uh, let's get into R and I've already got that up and I uh, should have already done this but uh, I didn't so I'm gonna go get my data And I like to keep the names of data uh, really, uh, my data set really simple and uh, did that here too. Uh, don't forget to attach your, attach your data. We should be beyond that by now. And the next thing I want to do is just uh, look at the names of my data. And now you can see that we have school, a trig score, algebra, and so on and so forth, just as we talked about before. That's kind of a cool thing. I, I don't really need to see the data set. I trust R that it's, that it's, uh, you know, it's making it happen. The uh, very first thing you'd want to do is report your descriptives. And I'm not going to go over that because we've gone over that ad nauseum. Uh, we'd want to look at, um, at uh, you know, box plots. Uh, you know, for example, um, let, me just, let me just do one of these. Uh, I may want to look at a box plot of total math uh, over uh, school. That would be something I would care about. Um, you know, the medians uh, are yeah, fairly close, uh, but you know, this distribution uh, appears to kind of create higher scores. So for school C, C there appears to be some, some higher scores. Uh, if I want to look at, uh, and again, I'm not going to go through this completely because <clears throat> it, it, we're at a time now where you guys have seen this. Uh, hmm. 
I don't know why I did that. <clears throat> so, uh, let's see. Tote math. Cross school. Me. All right. <clears throat> so we will look at the means across a school district. And guys, I'm not even doing a ANOVA yet. I'm just getting into just an ANOVA. Let's look at the total math score uh, across school. Okay. So the first thing I'd want to do, uh, quite possibly, is just run a Model 1 and run a straight, straight ANOVA. Straight ANOVA. Guys, it's early on a Saturday morning. Uh, across school. And then I'd want to run a summary of Model 1 and see what happens. So I have a difference here. Uh, our p-value is 0.0286. Uh, considering the small sample size, that's pretty... Uh, sufficient information or su sufficient evidence to indicate that there appears to be a difference in um, in uh, uh, mean scores across school district. Uh, I probably want to run a Tukey HSD here to see where the differences lie. And it appears that the the reason we rejected the null is primarily between school districts C and B. So when we take school mean C minus school mean B in the math, uh, we get a difference of 5.3 units. Uh, so we have statistical significance there where we don't have statistical significance in the other. So, you know, that's interesting information. But uh, let's say, for example, that the researcher has uh, bigger, better goals. So uh, let me come in with a hashtag here. So let's uh, say the researcher would like to like to examine uh, the math scores uh, divided well uh, across uh, trig and algebra okay so guys what we're doing here we just created two dependent variables And that's just screaming, you know, we need a MANOVA, okay? Okay, uh, let's, uh, let's just kind of keep this simple. What I want to do, I want to show you, you know, how again to, to do these, and I also want to, uh, to show you how to write it up. So um, uh, the very first thing that we'd want to do is uh, we'd want to bind our... Uh, our two dependent variables and what I want to do here I just want to run this on trig and algebra now my next model I'm going to call this model 2 I'm going to have a lot of models uh, going on here and it'll be kind of hard to keep up with what's uh, going on but uh, I think we can handle it so I want to run a MANOVA and I want to start with Y and I want to do this over as factor school and I want to do a summary uh, model 2 and when I get this uh, I get uh, you know a highly statistically significant uh, uh, result now some people may say well Pilai's trace is fine but I'd like to report Wilkes Lambda uh, if that's the case um, we can do that And Wilkes Lambda gives us uh, even more statistical significance. Uh, notice your degrees of freedom for the denominator decrease. I think I said it got, I, I may have misspoke that earlier. Uh, but uh, the degrees of freedom uh, for, the, for the denominator uh, decrease in, uh, for Wilkes Lambda compared to PLI's trace. So, uh, you know, we, we, we can report whichever. In this case, uh, there's, there's nothing fishy going on. What would be fishy is if... Pili's trace maybe turned out to be not statistically significant. Wilkes Lambda turned out to be statistically significant. Uh, I, I think if you're going to report that, you should be honest and uh, say, "Well, I ran both." But uh, uh, <laughs> here's the here's the one I'm reporting, um, and let the reader decide what to do with that. Of course, we can we, we can uh, you know strengthen stuff up, strengthen up our story by looking at uh, power and effect size, which is uh, uh, to come. Okay. So what I would want to do from the straight MANOVA uh, is I want to get out of here and show you how I would write this up. 
So I would say that uh, there was a statistically significant difference in uh, academic performance uh, based on Okay, how do I want to put this? Let's do this. All right, there was a statistically significant difference in algebra and trigonometry scores uh, across school district. Now, what I want to do is I want to come in with the, the good stuff. So first of all, I need F and I need the uh, degrees of freedom. And I'm going to go with Wilkes Lambda here. So the approximate F right here is 14.107. And my p-value is extremely low. And my dog, good gosh, the dog barks at everything. Um, well, I lost my... Thank you, dog. <laughs> so we got uh, 227, 14.107. All right, so 2, 2, 27. And it was uh, 14.107. I think that's right. All right, let me go back and check. Distracted here. Yeah, 14.107. And our p-value is uh, really small. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to come in with Wilkes Lambda. And Wilkes Lambda was uh, point, uh, 0 0.23. Now what I want to do is I want to come in with what's called partial eta squared. And this is going to be our effect size. And uh, let's, um, let me show you how to do that. Now to, to calculate our effect size for a MANOVA, uh, we have to install uh, a new package. And... Uh, the new package, uh, where are we here? Okay, so let's go install packages. And it's called Heplot. Heplot or Heplots? I uh, don't remember. Uh, surely it's Heplots. Well, let's see what happens. Okay, so apparently it's e-plots. Now, uh, computer's running kind of slow, but I'm assuming that uh, ultimately we're going to pop up something for us to choose uh, a crayon, and I really don't know why I choose this one, but I always do. I seriously doubt that uh, one crayon's going to work <laughs> better than another one, but uh, hey, who knows, maybe it will. So take a cup of coffee and get your, okay. So everything's down. Uh, guys, I always like to, uh, uh, once, once I get uh, this, I always look, like to look at the library. <clears throat> and it's loading the required package. I think car is the one we actually need here. Now, guys, there's a, a really cool, uh, I say cool because it takes very little work, uh, called ETA squared. And we can run this for our Model 2, which we're calling our MANOVA, and it will give us our, uh, our effect size. Now, uh, a good uh, way of kind of thinking about uh, the ETA squared 
uh, the, in terms of the interpretation of the effect. I, I typically, typically think of like a 0 0.02 um, as being a uh, really a pretty small uh, effect size. Uh, I think of uh, about uh, point, uh, no, I don't know, 1.5 as being uh, moderate. And uh, I would think, uh, I kind of think of, uh, you know, about a point 0.3 uh, as being uh, a large effect. Okay, so we've got a, uh, a large effect here. You know, there, there's, there's definitely something going on. So... Uh, using uh, our eta squared is what 0 0.39 so I would want to go back here and report that now in my write-up uh, I would want to say that you know the partial partial eta squared indicates um, uh, you know a, a, a high uh, uh, effect so again there's uh, there, there's there's stuff going on here uh, stuff that's uh, that's got my attention. Okay, if this was really uh, really going on. All right. The next thing I would want to do is I would want to run um, uh, partial ANOVAs. So what I want to do here uh, is I want to run what's called summary. Aov of my model two. Now this is going to be kind of cool because this is going to break down our trig and our algebra scores uh, across uh, across school. And what you can see is the MANOVA null hypothesis, which says there's a difference across. Uh, well, the null would be there's no difference across trig and algebra, uh, mean mean trig and mean algebra across school district. Uh, you can, and of course, the alternative would be there would be there would be at least one uh, different. Now, we, we can see why we rejected uh, the MANOVA, and it's primarily because of the, the trig score. Uh, we're not finding any difference across uh, uh, the, the difference in algebra scores across schools, so, uh, but we are finding uh, across, uh, across trig. So uh, I'm going to copy and paste this. I think I can do that. It may have been a bad mistake. Yeah, well, let's go back. Guys, my computer's gotten really, really, really slow this year, and I don't understand why. Uh, so what I probably do here, I'm going to just paste this information. Uh, I just hope this works. Hey, cool. So the write-up for this is I would say something... Um, <clears throat> uh, like this, I would say uh, school district uh, uh, shows a significant uh, difference for trig scores. And then I would come in and uh, give the stuff. So what is our F value? It's kind of hard to see. 19.45. P value very small. And uh, I'm not going to do it here because, uh, you know, I, we, it would be easy to do. But just go in and run your... Uh, Run your eta squared. So uh, you know, put this put this information in here. So school district uh, shows a significant difference for trigonometry, uh, but not for algebra.
so it looks like my f was uh, point, uh, 0 0.56 kind of hard to read that isn't it and our p-value is equal to 0.58 Um, now, guys, what we've done here, we've, we've run, uh, we've conducted uh, multiple ANOVAs. So, uh, you know, we may, need to kind of, uh, so uh, we need to uh, adjust. for the uh, alpha level and we may consider uh, using a Bonferroni adjustment I think I spelled, spelled that right uh, no I didn't spell that right huh so, I, don't know. Uh, I think that one's right uh, so we may consider using a Bonferroni adjustment, and uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, and that's, that's probably a good thing to uh, to say at this point. Uh, you know, at at the end of the day, um, um, what we're doing here, I'm just I'm going to give you again lots of different uh, introduction to lots of different statistical techniques here. Now, when this actually, you know, again in 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 preparation for doing your your master's thesis. Um, What's going to happen is you're going to, going to it uh, by the end of this class. You're going to be, you know, you should be very good at ANOVAs. Uh, you should be pretty good at a, at a two-way ANOVA, pretty good at ANCOVA, pretty good at MANOVA, pretty good at repeated measures, and so on and so forth. Whatever statistical procedure that you end up performing in your master's thesis, you're going to become really good at it because we'll dive into uh, that technique specific to your data that you've collected and. Uh, so uh, you'll become really good. Uh, my dissertation dealt with logistic regression. Yeah, I feel like I was pretty good going in. I felt like I was really, really good at it uh, when I came out. Unfortunately, that's, uh, what, 12, 13, 14 years ago. And I forgot stuff. So imagine that. Now, what I want to do next is I want to come in and do some multiple comparisons. And um, if... Um, R will let me do that. Now guys, the multiple comparisons that, uh, that I would like to do is I would like to, um, to, to go in across um, a school district. I still want to consider the MANOVA uh, design, but I'd want to do something like this. So uh, let's, let's come in with a Model 3, and I want to run my MANOVA, another MANOVA. And I want to, uh, did, I, did I use, did I bind these things or have I just been, uh, uh, yeah, I did bind them. Okay. So I'm going to do Y over uh, as factor school. And I want to, let's just be, I don't need that. And I want subset equals uh, as factor uh, school and then we come in and do something kind of cool here which allows us to take uh, our, our factor school and uh, focus on two groups and I want to do a summary of model 3 and what this allows me to do is it allows me to run uh, a MANOVA just across uh, A and B. And we can see that there is a statistically significant uh, uh, difference there. Now I'm going to copy and paste this, and I hope this isn't a mistake. Meaning that it bogs down, down the computer. And I would want to come in now and run a Model 4. And instead of A and B, I may want to run uh, A and C. And we have statistical significance there. Uh, I would probably want to come in. I'd want to do all multiple comparisons. So let's call this Model 5. And I may want to come in and compare B and C. 
and I'm not going to do uh, everything, but I'm going to come in and do the multiple comparisons, okay? Now, what I would want to do there is I would want to set up uh, a table. And uh, so here, you'd want to uh, set up uh, a table of multiple comparisons. And you can do something very similar. Uh, repeat uh, what we see from our Tukey uh, HSD uh, command in a straightforward ANOVA. And uh, so what you would do is you go in and, and create the dialogue that uh, talked about the statistically significant uh, different means uh, uh, across school districts. Uh, across schools uh, for, for your Minovas. So guys, you're going to get the opportunity to, uh, to do this uh, in, in, the next, uh, in the next assignment. And um, so uh, let me uh, show one more thing. Uh, we have a highly statistically significant uh, result here, but I will always want to do uh, a power, perform a power analysis. So guys, hopefully by now, uh, you have this, let me see if it'll come up, you have this uh, G-Power 3.1 installed on your computer. Uh, if you don't, uh, you, you know, you, you need to, to, to make it happen. So guys, under the family test, uh, we're clearly going to run an F-test here. And what I want to look at here is just a standard MANOVA. Uh, just do, uh, we don't want any interfere, inter repeated measures. So guys, I just want to choose the global effects. And uh, then I want to come down and I want to do a post hoc here to look at the achieved power. Okay, so my effect size uh, was, I forget. <laughs> For the overall, all, overall NOVA, my effect size was 0.39. Uh, we want our alpha 0 0.05. Guys, our total sample size was 30. Uh, we had three groups and we had two response. So we've got the default here. So calculate and you can see that our power was uh, 0.97. So our power was definitely sufficient uh, enough to uh, detect a difference. So uh, we, had, we, you know, we had no power issues. But that's something that we would want to uh, uh, you know, want to take a look at. So we have uh, a lot of power. Uh, if the null hypothesis is false, uh, we certainly have the power to detect that. And our effect size was, um, uh, you know, unusually large. Uh, so there appears to be um, a statistically significant difference between uh, mean algebra and mean trig scores across school district. And we've seen that that difference is primarily due to the uh, to the difference in the trig component. So we'd want to write that up and, um, uh, uh, you know, and uh, of course go from there. So guys, I think that's going to conclude this video. Uh, again, this is, this is getting you ready for your MANOVA, uh, uh, your, your MANOVA uh, assignments. So um, not sure whether we're going to get into a MANCOVA or not. Uh, probably won't have time. But uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll squeeze that in somewhere along the line. All right, guys. That's it. Have a good one.